As you can see, we are building the 3D model in FreeCAD step by step. Now we will add another part of this model. We created this solid by extruding a sketch to a specified value, and now I will show you how to remove material from the solid based on a sketch. When it comes to creating sketches in FreeCAD, besides the fact that we can create sketches on the basic planes of the coordinate system, we can also create sketches on the faces of the solid. To create a sketch on a face of the solid, we select the face that will be the sketching plane and choose the Create Sketch command. Now that face is the sketching plane. In this sketch I would like to create circles based on which I will create holes in this solid. I want the centers of the circles to lie at the centers of the fillets and we can do this in two ways. We can draw such a circle. I will draw this circle anywhere. For example, a circle with a diameter of 10 millimeters. Now, I could define the position of this circle by specifying the dimension from the center of the circle to the origin of the coordinate system. I select these two points and press the D key to activate the dimensioning. As you can see, I can specify the distance between these two points. I can specify the distance along the x-axis, or I can specify the distance along the y-axis. However, I will tell you right away that this method is not very good, it is time consuming and we can do it much more easily. We can use reference geometry, that is, we can create a reference geometry in the sketch based on this solid, which will help us define the position of these circles. We can do this using the create external geometry command. Select that command, and now we will create reference geometry based on these fillets. We hover the cursor over the fillet and click the left mouse button. As you can see, such a reference geometry has been created, and we have the center of that fillet here. We can use this point to define the position of the circle. We will add more reference geometries based on the other fillets. I right-click to cancel that command, and now I choose to draw a circle. I hover over this point. When this point is highlighted, I click the left mouse button and enter 10 millimeters as the diameter of the circle. Here the center of this circle has automatically been constrained to this point. While drawing the circle, I define the diameter of this circle and we have a fully defined sketch. I will create circles in the other corners. Here, I will do this by hovering over this point, clicking the left mouse button and not specifying a diameter. As for this corner, I will draw a circle anywhere. I right click to cancel the circle drawing command. Now, regarding these two circles, we will soon add a constraint that will define the position of this circle, but first, we will add a constraint that will define that the diameters of all the circles will be equal. To do this, we select all the circles, simply click the left mouse button on the circles, and choose the equality constraint. This constraint defines that the diameters of all circles are equal. In this case, one circle was dimensioned, so the diameters of the other circles were adjusted to this circle. This has the advantage that now, if I need to change the diameter of these circles, I just need to change the diameter of one circle, and the diameters of the other circles will be changed. As you can see here, we don't need to change the diameter of four circles. We can change the diameter of one circle. Thanks to having the constraint, that is, by defining the relationships between these geometries, we simply told FreeCAD that all these circles should have the same diameter. So now, when changing the diameter of one of those circles, the diameters of the other circles will also be changed. If you create such geometry, where we have many geometries with the same dimensions, I think it's better to use constraints. In this way, we define, for example, as in this case, the diameter of one circle, and we determine the other circle diameters using relationships. This is better than when we would have to dimension each circle individually, because sometimes such a situation may arise that we need to change a dimension. Then, if we have many identical geometries which have defined relationships, that can greatly facilitate and speed up the process of making changes. If there were no constraints, we would have to make changes to each geometry individually, but here it is enough to change the diameter of one circle, and the diameters of the other circles will adjust. Now, regarding these two circles, we will add constraints that ensure that the centers of the circles lie at the midpoints of those fillers. We do this by selecting this point, selecting this point, and choosing the coincident constraint. We do the same with this circle. 
select this point, select this point, and select the coincident constraint. The sketch is fully constrained. We close the sketch and now based on this sketch we will create holes in this solid. We will do this using the pocket operation. Select that operation. And as you can see, based on this sketch, material has been removed from the solid. This was done in such a way that this material was removed to a depth of 5 mm. Here we define the value of this parameter. By changing the value of this parameter, for example, by scrolling the mouse wheel, we can specify a specific value for this extrusion. We can do this in such a way that the extrusion value is greater than the thickness of this solid. If we do this way, I will reduce this value to 10 millimeters. So in this case, the height of this solid is 10 millimeters. Here we have the depth of the pocket set to 10 millimeters. I click OK. In this case, these holes are through holes. However, if such a situation arises that we now need to change the thickness of this solid, we do this by editing the operation based on which this solid was created. I double click with the left mouse button to edit this operation. For example, I will change the thickness of this solid from 10 millimeters to 15 millimeters. And I click OK. In this case, these holes are no longer through holes because in this case, the depth of these holes is set to 10 millimeters. If we have changed the thickness of this solid, the depth value of these holes has not changed because it is set at 10 millimeters. So these holes will not be through holes. If you would like these holes to be through holes, regardless of the thickness of the solid, when adding the pocket operation, we have something called the types of this pocket. Here we have a through all type, which determines that the pocket will be made through the entire solid, regardless of the thickness of that solid. I click OK, and now, regardless of what the thickness value of this solid will be, I can even enter 50 millimeters here. And these holes will always be through holes. I will return here back to the value of 10 millimeters and click OK. And as you can see, another important thing, even though this operation, based on which this solid was created, is the first operation, I can still edit this operation. This is a huge advantage of FreeCAD. Throughout the entire design process, we have access to this feature history.